Hey guys, welcome to the series on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. The playlist with all the videos related to MDE and Microsoft Defender XDR is in the description box. In this chapter, we will discuss what response actions can be taken on a device. So there is an attack detected. What actions can you take on that particular device? So if I want to go to the device, First, it would have, I mean, if there is an attack, it would have generated an alert. So I'm going to go to the alerts page that is in the Defender portal, security.microsoft.com. I'm going to go to incidents and alerts, then alerts. And then they, I have the device page. If I click on it and then scroll up, it tells me open device page. I can go to the device page from here or let me cancel this. In the main menu, if I scroll down to assets, then there is devices. I can go to the device from here as well. I'm going to click on the device name. Let me minimize this. Say that you know that dev this device is under attack. Okay, so what actions can you take? So if you click on these three dots, you can see the actions that you can take. The first one is to run antivirus scan. If I click on that here, you can remotely initiate an antivirus scan on that device. So Microsoft Defender antivirus scan can run even with other antivirus solutions. So it doesn't matter if Microsoft Defender antivirus is active or no. It might be in passive mode, but still it will work. And you will get two options, quick scan and full scan. So if you're choosing quick scan, that means a quick scan will examine all the potential areas where malware may be registered. Like for example, you know, registry keys and known Windows startup folders. So the quick scan really helps us protect against malware that starts with the system and kernel level mal malware and also it leverages always on real-time protection which reviews files when they are opened and closed and whenever a user navigates to a folder and the other option is a full scan so a full scan is initiated with a quick scan first it does a quick scan and then it does a systematic examination of all the mounted fixed disks and removable drives or network drive. So depending on the volume and nature of the data, a full scan can take a few hours or days to complete. So I'm going to select quick scan for now and say alert investigation in the comment section and then confirm. Once you confirm, this activity gets registered in the action center. Once you're done with it, you can come back after some time, go to the action center and check for this and it will be there. Like, let me close this. If I go to the main menu, scroll up under actions and submissions. If I go to action center, if I go to the history, I can see that uh, antivirus scan was started. It was submitted by me, submission time, and then the status says completed. Let me go back to the device page. I can go to the device page from here only. Let me go back to the three dots and let's look at another response action. So also when you run antivirus scan, even in the timeline of the device, it will show that a scan was uh, submitted. And the next option is collect investigation package. So this is to collect an investigation package from the device. So this will help us to identify what is the current state of the device. And also you can understand what were the tools and techniques that were used by the attacker. So when I download this, it will be in the zip file. Let me click on collect investigation package. And this says this action will gather information about the device. Once completed, you can download and view the package. I'll again say in the comment alert investigation and then confirm. So it says package collection pending. Once it is available, you can see it in the action center. It will say that the package collection is available. So if I go to action center, so you can go to action center from here as well. So I click on action center from the three dots and so it says package collection package is available. I'm going to download this. So it is in the zip format. I'm going to unzip that. So these are the folders that are available like auto runs. This has the uh, content of the registry of a known auto start entry point. So if I open this, this will actually help us to know the attacker's persistency on the device because it has the registry of a known auto start entry point. I'm going to close this. 
then if i go back there is installed a uh, program so if i open this this has the list of what is installed on the device list of all the programs i'm going to close this as well and if i go back then there is network connections this is all the information related to connectivity like connection to any suspicious urls or attackers command and control infrastructure any lateral movement or remote connections all those data will be here if i go back there is prefetch files so windows prefetch files are used to speed up the application startup process so in this you can see all the files that have been recently used or if there is any data that is deleted all that you can see here if i go back then there is processes this will Will give you the list of all the running processes that are currently running on the device this you can check if you want to identify any suspicious process that is being run by the attacker and then there is scheduled tasks here you can see any uh, tasks that are automatically scheduled and then if you if i go back there is security event log this contains like the name says security event logs like for example login and log out activity see if i open Open this. See, it is giving me all the details. Let me close it as well. Then, if I go back, there is services folder where you will get the uh, list of services and what status they are in. And then there is SMB folder. It will give us the list of access, shared access to any files, printers, and serial ports. I don't have any from this device, so it is saying there is nothing. I'm gonna close it. And then there is system information. It's like you know information. about os version and network cards and then if i go back there is temp directory contains a set of text files that list the files located in the temp directory okay for every user we have a temp directory it will give us those details then there is users and groups and if you go to local groups you can see what are the groups available then i'm going to close this and then there is wd support logs and then there is a collection summary um, file as well so it tells it says what commands were run to collect all this data see the command name and the command line if it was successful it did fail for some reason if there was an error all the details will be there in that forensics summary log okay let me close this folder now so that's about collection package now let's see restrict app execution if i click on that so this action will prevent applications that are not signed by microsoft from running so only microsoft application applications will run nothing else can be executed on that device so once you do that the user will also get a notification saying that some apps may not function as expected because your it admin has caused some windows defender limitations okay let me close this and the next action that we can take on a device is initiate automated investigation if i click on that see it says successfully initiated on automated investigation on the selected devices there is a separate chapter on what automated investigations do so i will link that in the description box so there be an investigation that will run on the device again and it will be added in the incidents and alert section if it finds something malicious or suspicious so you can go through the other video it, i will explain in detail what automated investigation is and what are the different levels what happens when it is triggered so i'm going to close this for now and go back to the three dots the next one is initiate live response session this will help us connect to the device using a shell there's again a different video because these are very long topics i'm not going to explain here you can you know run commands from here like for example if i say dir that is directory it's going to give me the list of directories on the device that i'm connected to you can get files from here you can upload files to the device you can run those scripts so i will link this as well in the description box let me go back and if i want to disconnect again the three dots and say disconnect session confirm so it says session disconnected i'm going to close this and go back to the device and then there is isolate device tab so what happens when you isolate a device it will disconnect the device from the network so it says clearly this action will isolate the device from the network it will be disconnected from the network but it will still be connected to microsoft defender for endpoint service 
So even if it is isolated, you can still get data from the device and also you can use live response even when it is isolated. So there is another option which says allow Outlook, Teams and Sky for business communication while device is isolated. So you can check this if you want the user still be able to see Outlook, Teams and Skype and then add a comment here and then say confirm. I don't want to isolate the device so I'm not going to do it but that is how you perform isolation and then again close. So if you have chosen to enable Outlook, Teams or Skype, right, you will still be able to communicate with the user even when the device is isolated. Also, when you isolate the device, the user will get a notification saying that the network is disabled. So these are the actions that you can take on a managed device. Managed device in the sense it has Microsoft Defender endpoint on it. But if you have unmanaged devices, you can also take actions on those. Like for say that you find that an unmanaged device which doesn't have Microsoft Defender. So there is this feature called device discovery. I will add it in the description box of video on that. That will help you to identify other unmanaged devices in your network using the devices that have Microsoft Defender endpoint on them. Once you find those unmanaged devices in your device inventory and suppose say that you have identified that one of these unmanaged devices compromised, you can take action on those devices as well. You can contain that device from the network. So when you contain that unmanaged device, the device that has Microsoft Defender endpoint onboarded on it will stop all the incoming and outgoing communication with that device. So when you try to contain that device, it will also give you a pop up saying this action will contain the device. Microsoft Defender endpoint onboarded devices will block communication to or from that device. So if you want to stop containing that device, you can just go click on instead of contain this device, there'll be an option to release from containment. And something that I forgot to mention is this download force release from isolation script. So isolating a device is a great thing to do when you know there is an attack going on. But sometimes you can not directly release that device. Sometimes the device becomes unresponsive when you isolate the device. So you can download this force release from isolation script and run it on the device to forcibly release those devices from isolation. So if I click on it, it says in situations when the device isn't responding, you can download and run a script to force its release from isolation. So download a script and then run it. Let me close this. Also, when there is an attack, there is an option to ask defender experts. I don't have this package, but it says that I can enroll to this. So this is how it will be if I had this option enabled. Investigation topic by it will take the device page that I am on. Then there is an option to provide your email address where you want the communication. So you are you can ask Microsoft Defender experts as well. These are called experts on demand, but you need to purchase this package. And once you take any action, you can go to the action center and see what has happened here. You can look at the investigation package collection, antivirus scan that is being uh, run, any app restriction that is there or device isolation from the action center. So these are the response actions that you can take on a device. In the next video, we will see what are the response actions that you can take on a file. That's it for today, guys. I will see you in the next video soon. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or if you want me to make a video on any other feature or tool, let me know in the comment section. If you like today's video, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like our videos that helps us a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.